Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Middleware Technologies. Today's topic is going to be uh, TLS communication uh, between the Open LDAP server and the client. So basically, like in our last video, like we have seen how we can build and install Open LDAP server, and we have seen how we we can utilize the uh, the Open LDAP uh, package utilities in order to manage the LDAP directory servers. But here in this video, like we will see like how we can secure uh, that uh, server, the Open LDAP server, so that the uh, the client to server communication that is going to happen uh, for the LDAP, uh, LDAP queries uh, is uh, is secured. Uh, basically, what I mean to uh, say secure is that whatever request or response is going to uh, take place in between the client and server that is encrypted using the TLS. So that that is a very basic uh, thing that we need to ensure that every server that we are going to uh, like create or establish needs to be secured in that manner. So that is what like we are going to do in this video. So here in this uh, video, like we are going to see like how we can secure our Open LDAP server using the set of TLS directives uh, in this uh, the configuration and see like how we can encrypt the uh, communication between the client and the server applications. Also, like we are going to see. Uh, uh, different methods of establishing the TLS uh, channel with the open LDAP server uh, using uh, different options and see like how they will establish the uh, uh, TLS communication channel uh, with the server. So let us see like how we can do this in this video and uh, like whatever article that I am referring to like I have already shared the details of this code and the article in a blog uh, which is uh, the link to that uh, blog is shared in the description of the youtube video so you can uh, have a look at it uh, to get get the uh, article details and the uh, instructions to uh, uh, to uh, create this uh, secure communication channel in the open LDAP server so let us see like how we can do this in this video so the test environment that I'm uh, using is a uh, Ubuntu server. So that uh, that server is going to be our LDAP server, and we can use any client. That, that we can use the same server as the client, or we can use a different server as a client to communicate with the LDAP server. So we will be looking at both the scenarios. So what is uh, TLS uh, using TLS. So basically, TLS is, is nothing but a set of uh, certificates that we generate uh, for a server, uh, which is basically uh, uh, providing a, a identity to that server. Okay, so that certificate we are going to install onto the Open LDAP server. So these certificates that we uh, procure uh, are basically usually signed by a certificate authority, uh, which is a third party. But in this case, like we are going to use the self-signed certificate, uh, and we'll be utilizing it on the on the server. And um, basically, the server certificate uh, see, uh, distinguisher name needs to match with the LDAP server fully qualified domain name, so that the secure communication channel can establish. And also, uh, for the client certificate, there is no need for authenticating the client certificate. That is an option, but that. Uh, thing also can be established but we are going to look at more on the server side uh, establishing the TLS channel okay so let us see now let us go into our procedure to uh, to do, do this activity so the first step is uh, what we are going to do is so basically like I am using an open uh, open LDAP uh, source package uh, which we are going to build and install so before that uh, in order to uh, like configure your open LDAP server uh, with uh, the TLS support we need to have the TLS libraries uh, that are header files and uh, uh, the libraries that are required uh, for the open SSL uh, communication to happen uh, that needs to be installed so the first step that we are going to do is we are going to install the libsfl dev package. 
sort so what we are going to do is we are going to install the libssl package to ensure the dependencies are present that's a spelling mistake but uh, yeah so libssl development package is already installed on my system so that should be fine but if it is not present on your system just go ahead and install that one the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to configure the OpenSSL uh, package that we have downloaded uh, with TLS is equal to OpenSSL. So basically uh, what it means is we want to use the OpenSSL implementation for the TLS uh, uh, communication uh, channel to be, utilized, uh, to be established. So let me go into my uh, folder wherein we have extracted the OpenLDAP package. So this is the place where we have uh, extracted the OpenLDAP package. Uh, you can just follow my previous video uh, wherein we have done all this setup. And now let us do configure with TLS is equal to open SSL and run it. So this is basically going to configure our script with the TLS support. Let us give it some time. It should be completed. Okay, so now we have uh, got this uh, configuration step done and we have successfully received this message that is make depend. So let me clear my screen and build the dependencies. Now the dependencies are built. Uh, let me now build the OpenLDAP package. Let us give it some time. Okay, now the open uh, uh, open LDAP package has been uh, built. Let me clear my screen. And the next step that we are going to do is we are going to install the open LDAP package. So let me install the open LDAP package. So Okay, so we have received the permission denied error because uh, I was trying to install make in, uh, using the make install without a privileged user. So let me do sudo make install. So now this is going to install our package and this is done. Let me clear my screen. So now we have our open LDAP package installed with the TLS support uh, using the open SSL implementation. Now let us go into our next step that is step 2 generate TLS certificate key pair. So in this step like what we are going to do is we are going to generate a set of key pair for the server the public key and the private key certificate uh, which is signed by a self-signed uh, CA certificate. Uh, and for this, like what we are going to do is we are going to uh, install the following package. So SSCG is a, a utility that we can install on our Ubuntu system in order to generate the, uh, the self-signed uh, self uh, public and private key certificates. So SSG is a self-signed certificate generator package. So this is what we are going to use. Let me clear my screen. And this is the command that we are going to use in order to generate our self-signed certificates. So as you can see, like I have passed a set of options uh, for my certificate, 
that we are going to generate so we are going to generate a certificate of uh, lifetime one year that is 65 days and these are the uh, attributes that we are going to uh, provide in order uh, for this uh, to uh, in order to identify the certificate basically who owns that certificate okay so this is like country state locality organization uh, organization unit that we are going to uh, pass and the host name for which the certificate we are going uh, want to generate and the subject alternative name this can be any names uh, like sad names that you can provide uh, basically i have provided here the host name and the other one is like uh, just for uh, future reference purpose that you ignore uh, and the key step that we uh, want to generate the certificate for is 2048 and the hashing algorithm is SHA-256 that we are going to use and the CS certificate we want to generate in this file and the certificate file we, uh, key file we want to generate in this and uh, certificate file we want to generate in this file and uh, we want to provide this uh, uh, permissions or more for the cert and the cert key okay so this is how we can use this uh, command in order to sscg command in order to generate the certificate key pairs uh, let me clear my screen and go to the home directory uh, i can run this over here in this place Okay, already file exists so I'll just try to delete them and uh, now let us try to run it again okay so the certificates are generated in the following location you can see these four uh, files have been generated this is the signer or the CA certificate this is the server key uh, or the private key the and this is the server's public certificate or the server certificate you can see okay and dh found uh, parameters that you can ignore for now that is not required for this activity now uh, the next thing that we are going to do is uh, we need to uh, create a location on our server where we can store our certificate so what i'm going to do is i am going to create this location uh, in the user local etc open uh, uh, folder it itself and we are going to copy the certificates So basically like what I'm doing is I'm copying the certificates that is the public and private key and the CA certificate into that location. Okay, so in this command like we have uh, copied the public and private key and in this command we are copying the CA certificate. Okay, so now if you look at the user local ds the certificate should be present but the permissions are wide so what we are going to do is we are going to change the ownership for that folder to root root so that only root is accessible uh, root is only uh, uh, can access that folder and also like uh, we are going to restrict the permissions to 400 for that folder but one more thing that we want to do is uh, the TLS, uh, the signer certificates needs to be accessible by uh, everybody else like user group and others so that whenever a uh, client is doing a LDAP search or trying to establish a, a communication channel with the LDAP server they should be able to uh, at least uh, connect uh, retrieve the ca certificate wherever it is located so for that purpose like we are going to give 775 permissions for that cs certificate temp file and now if you look at the now if you look at the permissions like you can see the server key and server certificates are restricted to root user 
and they only can read it and the ca certificate is uh, open so that everybody can read it and load it okay so this is how like we need to provide the permissions once that is done now let us go into our next step that is config, uh, configuring the start tls in slapd configuration database so basically in order to establish a uh, uh, tls communication channel there are some set of directories that we need to uh, use uh, in the uh, configuration database that we are going to create so in this like we are going to like basically uh, use the following ldif file So this is the uh, same LDIF file that we are going to uh, that we get it from the default location of the OpenLDAP. So if you see the default file uh, that is present in user local etc OpenLDAP slab d LDIF dot default. So this is the default file that you can use uh, to modify it and use it for setting up the LDAP directory. So I'm going I'm using the same thing. Uh, let me open that file which I have modified. So you can see this is the file. So the uh, the global configuration uh, setting is present in the scene is equal to config uh, wherein we have the arguments file and PID file set and additionally like what we have done is we have set the TLS directives which is OLC TLS CA certificate file uh, referring the CA.pem file and OLC TLS certificate file is referring to server cert.pem file and OLC certificate key file is referring to server key.pem file. So this is the only addition that we have done but everything else remains the same. So the CN is equal to module remains the same cn is equal to schema remains the same in uh, the front end database which is the uh, holds the configuration for all other other database that remains the same and the lmdb database that remains the same uh, only thing is we have added the olc uh, root password so that is i think already present and we have modified the root uh, dn and the suffix and this location uh, e, uh, is required to be present uh, to hold the uh, directory database so these are the things that are already existing in the default uh, configuration file and this is the monitor uh, database so as i said like this is the default uh, file that uh, we are modifying uh, in order to incorporate the TLS directives those are the three uh, directives that we have added okay so now let us go into our next step that is loading the configuration database so in our step 4 like what we are going to do is we are going to import the configuration database so for that as I said like we need to have two uh, uh, locations present so we need to ensure that user local etc slab d is empty and this, because this is the location where the configuration database is going to be uh, kept okay so i have the slab d folder already created with root ownership and 755 permission and we also need to have the data directory uh, present that is user local var open ldap so this is currently empty because there is no data right now and the folder uh, permissions should be owned by root user so that the slab d table that we are going to start with uh, the root user should be able to uh, write into this folder location okay so these are the two folders that you need to ensure that they are present now let us run the slabd command uh, to 
import the configuration database. So we are going to use slab D to import the 0th database that is CN is equal to config uh, into the following location and this is the LDIF file, uh, the configuration database file that we are going to use in order to load the configuration database. So now you can see the configuration database has been loaded. So you can just go to user local etc slab d and the configuration database is present. And here, like if you look at the CL is equal to config.ld file, let me do sudo cat. You can see like it has added the following three global configuration for TLS community uh, channel establishment okay so this is like olc tls ca certificate file olc tls certificate file olc tls certificate key file so that is done now so let me clear my screen and let us go into our next step that is step 5 configuring client tls so uh, in order to uh, communicate with the server uh, the client is uh, there will be a client uh, the client usually uses a different configuration file that is uh, located at the following location so let me open this file so as you can see this is the uh, default uh, configuration file that the LDAP clients like LDAP search LDAP modify uh, uses in order to establish communication with the LDAP server. So here like what we are doing is we are adding this directive TLS CA certificate uh, referring to the following uh, the signer certificate or the CA.pem file. So basically whenever the client uh, binds or establishes a uh, TLS uh, channel with the uh, the server, the open LDAP server, it is able to verify the, the server certificate that is sent uh, by the client, uh, by the server using the CA certificate that is uh, like present in the uh, the client, so, uh, client side uh, basically, okay. So let me clear my screen. So, so you need to ensure that your LDAP.conf file is updated with the the CA certificate file uh, location so that the client can use it to establish a secure channel with the server. Now let us go into our next step that is step 6 start the LDAP daemon. So here like we are going to now start up the LDAP service. So let me do clear my screen and start the LDAP service using sudo. So this is the slab D uh, binary and we are passing the location of the configuration database. Let me start it and you can just verify using ts minus pf that the slab D daemon is up and running. So let me just increase the font. Sorry about that. Okay, so now like we have started our LDAP daemon, and uh, now let us go to our next step that is step 7 uh, to create the LDIP database entries file. So, what we are doing over here is uh, we are going to create a LDIP file which holds the entries for the LDAP directory. So what we are doing over here is we are just creating the same uh, entries that is organization, organization role. Uh, these are the two users uh, with the organization role that we are creating in stack.com. Okay. And there uh, and we are creating another organization unit that is DevOps and creating three set of users. Okay, so this is the uh, same file that we are using 
uh, as we have used in our last video. So you can just create this file to add entries to the LDAP database. And now let us go uh, to our next step that is step 8 add entries to the LDAP directory. So now let me add that entries to the LDAP directory. So here, like we are using the LDAP add utility and uh, binding with the CNN is equal to manager that is the root DN and uh, passing the root password and we are going to pass this file in order to create the entries. Let me provide the root DN bind password and we have created the following entries now in our LDAP directory database. So our database is ready. Now let us go to our next important step that is step 9 searching the LDAP directory. So here like uh, for the first method that we are going to use is we are going to establish uh, the, the channel uh, with the LDAP server using the default port that is 389 and on the local host. So basically uh, LDAP server by default, uh, default listens on every uh, uh, interface, network interface and the default port, uh, port that it listens on is 389 that is the insecure uh, uh, port or the insecure channel you can say. But what we are going to do is in our LDAP search command we are going to pass this minus ZZ, ZZ uh, option basically if we are using one Z, that means uh, we are asking asking the LDAP search to uh, start a TLS channel. Uh, try to establish a, a, a TLS channel, but if that is not possible, uh, it can fall back to the uh, insecure channel that is listening uh, that is going to be happening on the 389 port only. But uh, let us first try to establish a TLS channel okay but if we are using two Z's that means like uh, we are asking the LDAP uh, search client to ensure that whatever uh, communication channel is going to be established with the TLS server on the port 389 it needs to be encrypted okay so that is the whole thing about the ZZ option okay so as I said in this method the LDAP server listens on the default port that is 389 but we are passing this option that is ZZ in this request this option issues start TLS extended operation if you use ZZ the command will require the operation to be successful okay so basically we if we are passing one Z we are uh, telling it uh, the LDAP search to establish a TLS channel but if it is not happening we can go with the unsecured channel but ZZ means we strictly want the TLS channel to be established on the port 389 ok so now let us try to do this LDAP search let me clear my screen and try to do LDAP search with strict uh, start TLS establishment so we can see the connection and that start TLS connection as errored so let me have a look at it so in order to debug uh, these uh, errors like what we can do is we can enable the debug option with 255 and run this command again and you can see like uh, the TLS could not load the verify location that is ca.pen file ok so basically it is not able to read uh, that ca.certificate file in order to establish a channel with the server ok so what we are going to do is uh, let me go into that location that is user local etc open LDAP TLS Let me go to user local etc open lab tls. 
so the certificates are provided the correct permission but it is not able to enter into the TLS location itself okay so what we are going to do is we are going to do uh, chmod 755 for the TLS folder itself and uh, so now like at least it will be able to go into the TLS location that non root uh, user and uh, try to uh, look for the ca.pem file okay so let me clear my screen now and uh, do LDAP search again remove the debug option and here like what we are going to do is we are going to pass the uh, pass the bind dn password for bob entry that is bob at the rate one two three four okay so now you can see the tls start tls uh, channel has been established on the default port that is 389 uh, if you want to look at the details of that uh, some channel it can just again pass the 255 debug option so it will provide you with the complete track trace of the tls channel that is it is trying to establish okay so here it is asking for the password so you can see the the search has been completed with the result success so it has uh, tried to fetch the records uh, from the LDAP directory using the start TLS method. So that is how like we can use the default port that is 389 and make it uh, uh, in such a way that uh, we are communicating on the TLS, uh, TLS channel uh, using the default 389 port. So uh, the drawback of this uh, method is we are using the same port that is 389 for both the unencrypted communication and the encrypted communication that is the TLS communication so uh, in a organization wherein uh, like unencrypted ports are blocked uh, it might be not possible to use uh, the 389 port and establish a TLS communication channel in that place so that is the, uh, the only drawback uh, which uh, is present but uh, in this method uh, it uh, reduces the uh, it basically uh, you allows uh, for us uh, an unencrypted uh, unencrypted uh, channel to be established for uh, the records but uh, for the records that are uh, basically uh, not that much uh, like confidential or sensitive so in that case like we can use this method uh, and that is also the recommended one but organization wide like if you are blocking the the un uh, secure channel uh, this method might not work for you okay so now uh, we will be looking at the another method that is uh, LDAP, uh, securing our LDAP channel using LDAP S protocol okay so now let us go to the step 10 that is configuring LDAP and LDAP S. So what we are going to do over here is uh, we are going to uh, uh, first let us stop the slapd daemon. Let me stop the slapd daemon. So we have stopped the slapd daemon. Now what we are going to do is we are going to start up the slapd daemon using the following host uh, option that is like we are going to listen on port in lab protocol that is using the 389 default port and we are going to use the uh, we are going to uh, like uh, listen on LDAP secure protocol also that is going to uh, be listening on the 636 default port so we are going to ensure that our LDAP service is running on both LDAP and LDAP secure protocols let me run this one and do ps-ef grep slapd 
to ensure that our process is running and listening on both 389 and 636 port, uh, port for communication. Now we are going to do three types of uh, LDAP search. So the first LDAP search is going to be on the insecure channel. So by default, like if you are not uh, uh, providing this minus H option, it is going to listen on uh, the default 389 and the LDAP uh, protocol. Okay, uh, but we are passing it for our understanding. So we are going to communicate on the uh, insecure channel first and ensure that is it is listening. Uh, let us provide the bind uh, password for the Bob entry. So you can see the details are fetched. For now, you can just ignore this user password because I haven't secured the uh, the attribute user password in the LTIF file. But you can just add those OLC access uh, uh, directives in order to ensure that. Uh, this user password uh, attribute is protected from any other uh, users like only uh, the authorized users will be able to fetch that uh, entry uh, or the attribute okay so now let me clear my screen uh, now let us go to our next uh, search that is going to be done uh, with the start TLS on insecure channel so for this what we are going to do is we are going to pass the ZZ option and try to establish the communication channel and you can see the communication channel has been established and we are able to retrieve the uh, entry in the directory database let me now clear my screen and the third search that we are going to do is uh, let us try to search for uh, and do a LDAP search with uh, start TLS on a secure channel. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to use this same command as the last command, uh, but we are going to modify the host option to use LDAP S protocol with 636. So in this case, like what happens is we are already trying to establish a TLS channel using the LDAP S protocol in the first place itself. So the command will fail with the following error that is TLS already started. Okay, so that means like we are not required to use the ZZ parameter anymore. So let me search with without the ZZ parameter that is TLS search on secure channel. Okay, so let me do it and provide the bind and password for the pop and you can see like we are able to retrieve the entry from the directory database so this is how like you can do the LDAP search on a secure channel on an insecure channel and on an insecure channel with start TLS so it is up to you uh, how you want to run your open LDAP server whether you want to uh, have the open LDAP server uh, uh, like provide both LDAP and LDAP secure protocol or you want to establish only uh, or you want to have your open LDAP server run only on any one of the protocol or whether it is LDAP or LDAP secure it is up to you uh, based on how, uh, what type of uh, restrictions you have in your organization but it is preferred uh, to make sure that your communication with the LDAP server is secured and the data between the client and server that is getting communicated is encrypted now let me clear my screen so as I said like we are using the same server wherein the slavery daemon is running uh, we are using the same server as the client uh, in order to do the LDAP search but uh, now let us go into uh, another server so let's say this is my host machine server uh, from where we are going to do the LDAP search so in this also like we need to ensure that we have the uh, the open LDAP uh, uh, client and uh, the open LDAP library present 
so this is my fedora machine so i'll uh, show you like what open lab packages i have So we can see the, uh, like we have the OpenLDAP library package and the OpenLDAP clients package. The clients package uh, will provide us with the LDAP uh, utilities that is LDAP add, LDAP search, LDAP modify that we can utilize. And the OpenLDAP package basically, uh, let me do RPM minus QF, QL, let me do QL to list out the, all the files that are present in this package. So with this OpenLDAP package, we are going to get this client uh, configuration file uh, which we are going to use with the LDAP client. So if you uh, let me open this file and as I said, like I'm using, uh, uh, like we are going to, we need to update the, uh, the client configuration file with the TLS CA cert uh, to establish a, a secure channel uh, with the LDAP server. So here like I have added this certificate. So I have already uh, copied my certificate CS uh, CA.pem file into the following location and uh, I am referring that location in this LDAP.conf file so that the LDAP search uh, can utilize that CA certificate file. Now let us do those same uh, queries that we have done over here the last three queries so the first query is going to be the LDAP search on the insecure channel let me clear my screen and do LDAP search on insecure channel and provide the binding password okay so it is not able to uh, communicate with the server so let me do have a look at it okay so as you can see like it is not able to uh, contact the LDAP server uh, with this so let me uh, try to show you like what exactly is going wrong, wrong over here so this is our LDAP server uh, I'll go into my uh, etc host file and here like uh, you can see the default entries that we have is uh, the loopback address only that has uh, that is referring to the host name fully qualified domain domain name but there is no uh, dns entry uh, for the ip address for the server that is this ip address uh, uh, to like map to the fully qualified domain so what i'm do go doing over here is i'm just going to add this uh, entry for the dns lookup so that whenever a query uh, whenever a, a, a any any client is a, a trying to establish on the following uh, host or the fully qualified domain name uh, like uh, we are able to resolve uh, that to the following ip address okay so so let me enable this one and try to kill the service LDAP service and uh, again let us start up the service and now you can see uh, the service is up and running let me do ps my cf Okay, so the service is up and running. Now let us go to the LDAP search again from my client host. And now you can see the LDAP search has happened successfully. So basically it has something to do with the DNS because I'm using the virtual machines and it is not able to, uh, I think, resolve the fully qualified domain name. Uh, that's why I have added that entry uh, for uh, the use uh, the fully qualified domain name uh, mapping to that ip so that uh, the server is um, basically able to uh, like retrieve the ip address for that corresponding uh, domain name uh, fully qualified domain name and try to uh, make that uh, the channel established okay so this is uh, the unsecure communication that we have done 
now let us do for the uh, do the lab search over start tls from the client machine okay so this error is coming because i am using a old uh, ca.pem file so let me just copy that uh, ca.pem file again so in the home directory i have that uh, signer.pem file so i'm just going to update uh, that certificate take it etc uh, sorry search CA. Uh, let me look at that location where uh, I have that uh, let me look at that location So this is the location wherein I need to update my ca.pem file. So let me remove this one and copy the, the certificate that we have extracted from the server. So this is the new certificate CA signer certificate that I am going to copy onto the client machine and it is done now and now let us go to the LDAP search again with start TLS and now you can see like it is able to establish the secure uh, communication channel using the start TLS method and the last one like uh, what we are going to search is we are going to do a depth search over secure channel so we are going to use this one uh, wherein it uses the LDAP S protocol with the port 636 and the host name on which the open LDAP server is running now let me provide the bind DN for the blog you can see the entry has been as uh, the uh, secure channel has been established and we are able to retrieve the entries from the LDAP directory so this is what i wanted to show you uh, like how we can secure our own open LDAP server uh, and the client uh, uh, communication using the tls and you have seen like how we can use the start tls uh, for en encrypting the channel and also the LDAP as protocol uh, to encrypt the channel I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, thank you all. Uh, thanks for watching this video and you guys have a great day.